everybody, so today I'm going to be doing a video about my top tips for making a successful application to Oxbridge. I am off to Cambridge in two weeks time to start natural sciences. While my application is fresh in my mind, I thought I'd share some advice and some of my experiences with future applicants. Tip number one, choose what subject you would like to do a degree in before choosing Oxbridge. Make sure the subject genuinely interests you, you'd be happy to do it for three years minimum. If Oxbridge offer the subject that you would like to do a degree in, proceed with your application, keep going. If they don't offer it, leave now. Please don't just apply to Oxbridge because of their reputation. It's stupid, there's so many good other unis that will offer your subject or do a degree that's more suited to you. Oxbridge don't have every subject on offer, no uni can really don't make sacrifices just because it's Oxbridge. And this applies generally, always choose your subject before choosing your uni, it's so important. Don't stress if you don't know what degree you want to do yet, there's loads of information online. When deciding between Oxford and Cambridge, check the different courses. For example, for me, I wanted to do a broad science degree, Oxford only offered just chemistry or just physics. Whereas Cambridge, I could do natural sciences, could do physics, chemistry and maths in my first year and then specialise when I decide more what I want to go into. When choosing your A-levels, think ahead, look online on the Oxford and Cambridge sites, what A-levels they require for different degrees. Brussels Group Unis have published a list of facilitating subjects which they recommend as subjects to take if you want to make competitive applications to top universities. I'll link it down below for you to have a look at. To increase your chances of getting accepted, it is good to do at least two facilitating subjects. Tip number two, go to an open day at Oxford and Cambridge or whichever one you're interested in. Oxford and Cambridge is not for everyone. Make sure you like the feel of the town. Make sure what they've got on offer for you is perfect in terms of accommodation, in terms of the course, in terms of welfare. It's really important that it's perfect in every way for you. Tip number three, Oxford and Cambridge really encourage super curricular activities. These are extracurricular activities that relate to your subject. For example, I did chemistry enrichment sessions after college on Wednesdays. I wrote an essay on fracking for an essay competition. It doesn't matter if you don't win a prize. I didn't hear anything back. The skills I learned from writing the essay, doing research on it. You can write about all this stuff in your personal statement. I did a trip to a university and had experience using lab equipment which I wrote about in my personal statement. There are also Nuffield research placements that you can do where you do work experience in the summer that's relevant to your subject. Of course I'll link all this down below as well. It can even be stuff you can easily do at home, you can watch a documentary. If you see on the TV a documentary in an area that's related to your subject, watch that. You might find something that really interests you and you want to look into further and this is gold for personal statements. I went to a lecture on the Rosetta Space Mission because I am interested in astrophysics and I wrote about what I found out about the chemical composition of the comet and all that jazz. It was very interesting. I actually enjoyed the lecture a lot. Here I've got my Rosetta lecture notes. I went to the lecture, made them a mind map so I'd remember what they spoke about. So I would recommend making notes when going to lectures. I know on YouTube there's lectures by professors that you can watch online if they're in a subject topic that interests you. I'd recommend watching that. There are also Olympiads, you can do, there's a Maths Olympiad I know, a Chemistry Olympiad, Biology Olympiad, Physics Olympiad. I did the Cambridge Chemistry Challenge in my AS year, I did the Maths Olympiad in my second year, I did one for girls, the MOG Maths Olympiad for girls I think it was in my first year shortly after I started. Throw yourself into it doesn't matter if you don't get the bronze award, gold award, whatever, does not matter. You just need to make sure that you think about what you gained from it. You can't just say to Oxbridge, oh, I've read this book, oh, I've watched this documentary. What did you learn from the documentary? What did you gain from the documentary? What really interests you? What do you want to look in into further? Tip number four is definitely read around your subject. I read a materials science book called Stuff Matters by Mark Neodownick because I was considering at the time doing material science as part of the natural sciences tripos at 
Cambridge. The book was really interesting, I wrote about it in my personal statement, I specified a chapter that really interested me about aerogel, it linked to my interest in astrophysics, and you don't have to pay for the books, just go down your library and there will be books around your subject. I went to the library, borrowed Stuff Matters for a few months because it took me a while to get through it, but we'll forget about that, I did have to pay a few fines on that. <laughs> Well, it was on the Cambridge suggested reading list for natural sciences. I'll link down below some of the suggested reading lists for subjects. This is Human Universe by Brian Cox, which I am currently reading. I'm a few chapters in, slowly working through it. A physics book that I'd recommend that I read over this summer after my application to Cambridge, but I wanted to keep up the reading, keep up my research into my subject and make sure I didn't forget everything over the summer. So I read Seven Brief Lessons on Physics by Carlo Rovelli, I think you pronounce it. It was really good, relatively thin, so it wasn't too hard going. Really well explained, you've got pictures in there. You don't have to be a PhD physicist to understand what's going on in the book, which is perfect. It wasn't on the reading list, but I really enjoyed it and would recommend it. And this is another book which my granddad bought for me, it's Statistics Without Tears, it's on the Natural Sciences reading list. It's actually intended for people taking the biology module and not the full mathematics module, I think it's called Mathematical Biology, whereas I would actually be taking mathematics, so my granddad didn't know this when he was buying it but I really appreciate it, I'm going to read it anyway because I'm sure it's going to be really useful and I look forward to starting that one. Any extra reading you can do about your subject is great. It really shows an interest in your subject, a passion for learning. Don't worry if you don't want to read a whole book. Magazine articles are fine. This is Blue Sight, which is the Cambridge Science Magazine, written by Cambridge students, I believe. There was this article which I read, In Search of Quantum Gravity. I don't remember much about it, not gonna lie, but I think I did find it interesting at the time. Any science magazines, doesn't have to be this one. There's lots of out. If you find an article you like, look up online. In your personal statement, you can write whether you agree, maybe, with the author's findings, compare books you've read. It's all developing your thoughts about the subject, developing your understanding of the subject, which Oxbridge really like. Tip number five is to attend a summer school or masterclass run by Oxford and Cambridge. You can apply to them. They're in lots of different subjects. I'll link them down below. The Sutton Trust run summer schools at Cambridge and other really good unis around the country. They do favour people whose parents have not gone to uni, so if that's you, I'd definitely look into that. The same with Oxford Unix summer courses. I know some people who went on those and really enjoyed them. I went on a Head Start EDT summer school at Cambridge doing material science. It was really fun. I did have to pay for it as it wasn't a widening participation one. It was actually a really rewarding course. You have to pay a few hundred pounds for it. It was run by the university. You've got to be careful. Some There are some companies who run summer schools that aren't actually part of the university. So look out for that and they'll charge a lot extra, which you don't need to be paying when you can get ones for free. My summer school in material science was really good. I stayed at Churchill College in Cambridge. I got the feeling of staying in the halls. I went to a few lectures by lecturers at Cambridge. One of my lecturers is actually the admissions tutor at the college I'm going to now. I don't know whether that gave me an advantage or not, but I tried to play on it anyway in my application. He gave us a talk on the summer school about admissions and what he looks at, so that was really helpful. Um, I got to tour the colleges, really got a feel of Cambridge and really knew that it was going to be my first choice uni. I know Oxford and Cambridge also run masterclasses, I'll link some information about that down below if you're interested in lots of different subjects. Tip number six, write a killer personal statement. Now I know that's easier said than done, I did about 10 or 11 drafts. Make sure you pack it with super curricular activities. Oxford and Cambridge don't care about extracurriculars. They don't care if you play a musical instrument. They don't care if you've done your Duke of Edinburgh, but other universities do care. So it's important to still put that in your personal statement. Make sure it's honest, make sure it's detailed, make sure it's factual. 
write about the supercurricular activities that you've been doing, like I mentioned earlier, watching documentaries, attending guest lectures at universities, attending any summer schools you found really interesting, reading articles online, stuff you've seen in the news, extracurricular activities with your school, going on trips relating to your subject, relevant work experience, put it all in your personal statement, pack it full. Oxbridge like a really academic personal statement. I went to a talk from an admissions tutor at the college I applied to. They said that they don't look too much into the personal statement because they have the interview that they prefer to rely on and they don't have so much need for the personal statement as other unis do and that for Cambridge the personal statement is not as important as it is for other unis. However, a great personal statement is never going to hurt. Make sure you don't include any cliche lines like ever since I was born, ever since I was in the womb, I loved physics, etc, etc, etc. Don't name drop, don't look up fancy quotes online unless it really, really fits. Keep your personal statement about you. Always try and make it better, keep trying to improve it, but there does come to a point where you think can much more be done to it. I had to stop myself from editing mine after a while. I thought that will do what I've got. Just don't be afraid to do lots of drafts. It will be rubbish to start off with, but by the end of the day, you'll get a really good personal statement. Make sure you do it nice and early so you don't have to panic as the early deadline approaches. Tip number seven is to make sure you prepare for the admissions test. It will be in early November. I'll write down below the exact date this year. There's lots of information about the admissions tests for each subject online. Cambridge introduced admissions tests for most subjects last year. Oxford, I know, have had them in place for quite a while. I had to do the Natural Sciences admissions assessment. I prepared for the Natural Sciences one by doing the specimen paper online. I made sure to practice it under timed conditions as the timing was impossible. I could not finish. I Well, in the actual thing, I didn't finish. I feel like I did about two thirds of the section two of the paper. The first section for the natural sciences admissions assessment is multiple choice. Section two is long answer questions. For the first section, you choose which sections you want to do depending on what A-levels you're doing. The second section, you can take your pick out of different subject choices for chemistry, physics and biology. You can find more information on this online. Don't be put down if you find it really hard, it's designed to be challenging. I know for a fact that I did very badly in it, but clearly everyone else did, so it's fine. Honestly, after the admissions assessment, I thought, damn it, I'm not even gonna get an interview, this sucks. It was really hard, but they're expecting everyone to find it hard. The most important thing that I'd stress is practice under timed conditions. You need to work as fast as possible to get through all the questions they are throwing at you. Tip number... Right, one sec, I don't know what number we're up to. Tip number eight is to relax about the interview. They're designed to be challenging. Don't spend months preparing for it. Think about it in the few weeks leading up to it. Do some practice questions. I know there's online some sample questions of what they may ask you. I practiced with a older student at my college. You can always get a teacher to go through some practice questions with you or ask a parent to throw some questions at you. Make sure you know the syllabus of each subject you take for A-level inside out. For my interview, I was given maths problems, science problems. I was given a sheet of paper told to answer it. Just make sure to think out loud and you'll be fine. I will link some sample questions down below. Tip number 10 is revise, revise, revise. There's no point getting an offer if you're just going to miss the grades. Like, who would do that? Revise your subjects well. Oxbridge require high grades. In your first year of sixth form, make sure you are doing lots of work. It's no good slacking your year and expecting predicted grades of 4A stars, 3A stars, whatever. You need to make sure you work for it and then your teachers will predict you what you deserve. I mean, you can try bribing your teachers. I wouldn't recommend it. I'm not sure how well you get on there. Tip number 11. I don't have enough fingers for this. Be optimistic. You've got to believe in yourself. No one else is going to believe you can do it. If you don't, the admissions for Oxford and Cambridge is supposed to be challenging. Don't feel intimidated by it. 
if you get worried about it, your performance at interview and in the admissions assessment, it could be affected by a negative mental attitude. You've got to think you can do it. Don't be like me coming out of the admissions assessment going, I'm not gonna get an interview. Don't be like me coming out of the interview going, I'm not gonna get an offer. You're not psychic, you have no idea what's going to happen. I thought I'd miss my grades. I had missed my grades. So sometimes you can be right, but don't try and predict the future. Be optimistic. My advice to everybody would be to aim high. You can do it if you put your mind to it. If you're unsure whether Oxford and Cambridge is for you, you can always apply and then reject them. How great would that feel? Rejecting Oxford or Cambridge would feel pretty good. So if you're unsure, apply. You can always withdraw your application. Don't let your background, like going to a state school, affect you. I went to a state school, I've got a place there. It's not just for private school students. The more state school pupils who apply, the more state school pupils will be accepted. Final tip, Oxbridge isn't for everyone. They do make mistakes. People go on to get all their stars at A-level and don't get offered a place at Oxbridge. And you think, what were they thinking? The course is not suited for everyone. The admissions tutors try their best. If you get rejected, don't be disheartened about it. They make mistakes at the end of the day and it's their loss. Okay, so that's about it. I'll link everything down below that I've mentioned. Keep working hard and hopefully I will see you in years to come. Bye.